Hey, happy Wednesday. Welcome everyone to Wonderland Wednesdays, a uh, very first official episode of Inside Allison's Wonderland. So um, I want to say thanks to everybody who's tuning in live, Jojo Joker, Princess Kristen, Bradley, Jeff Goodman. Hey, a lot of blast from the past right now. I'm so glad you guys are tuning in live. Um, basically, uh, this show is a reboot of Inside Allison's Wonderland, which was um, an interview show that I created back in 2009, so 11 years ago, for those of you that aren't good at math. And um, I wanted to reboot it and sit down with some people working in animation today and just get a different broad perspective on everybody's jobs, what people do and how their, how their um, position within the animation industry connects with others. So um, today, for our first interview, we're going to be interviewing Tom Krajewski. Tom is an animation uh, writer as well as um, a, a story editor and a co-author of this new graphic novel, which both me and my son love. Um, it's called Primer. It's all ages and it's out now on DC Comics. So definitely go check that out. Hey, sunshine. So good to see you. Okay, so Tom is here now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask him to join. And live. Let me know when you're there, Tom. Look, I even brought visual, visual stimuli for you. Um, so yeah, hopefully everybody's doing great today. We might take some uh, questions at the end. So if you have any burning desired questions that you want Tom to answer, just be sure to let me know. So um, yeah, hey Jill, it's good to see you guys. Yeah, um, so I have known Tom for, gosh, more than 10 years. Um, Tom is an Emerson College alum, those of you guys that know, that's where I went to college. And we didn't know each other in school, but um, quickly upon um, graduating uh, and moving to Los Angeles, I was uh, looking to connect with people that worked in animation and somebody connected us. And so went and um, had coffee at a coffee shop in Burbank right down the street. And um, yeah, and so the rest is history. So we're having a little bit of trouble. Let me see if I can invite you again, Tom. Um, um, so yeah, um, the idea is we're gonna try and do this every Wednesday. Yeah. There you are. I hey. made it. I figured okay. it out. <laughs> Thank you. I, it's not that. You, it's not that simple. And um, yeah. So and, yeah. For you. I apologize. I was trying to log in, and I don't know anything about like Instagram, obviously. And uh, <laughs> so I was trying to like make sure I, you know, accepted your request. And I'm just like whatever. But I'm here. Hi. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us. It's so good to see your face. Yeah, it's good to see you too. It's been, I haven't actually seen you in person probably for, well, a year, maybe, I guess, maybe. I'm I don't know. Um, for those of you guys, I mean, I don't know if it's like TMI, but we live in the same neighborhood. So the last time <laughs> I saw you, I think I was on my bicycle, my yeah. pink and, and green bicycle, and you were walking to the post office. Yeah, probably. Yeah, well, thanks for having me here. It's really cool yeah. to... So, you know, talk stuff. Um, so, yeah, do you want to um, quickly just kind of talk about your position, um, some of the shows you've worked on and, and the different capacities that you've worked on them? Oh, yeah, sure. Like, um, right now what I do is I'm a story editor, which is basically the head writer of the show. So I'm in charge of all the writing and, um, you know, making sure that uh, what the producers want or the creators want or make sure that the scripts kind of match their tone and what they're going for. Because every show is usually pretty different. So they need like a story editor like myself to kind of like make the show exactly what they want. So you are the ship captain of the writing department. That's me, right. the ship captain. <laughs> yeah, I'm a captain. That makes me sound important. I like that. Better than story editor. Story you know, editor. you need like a little. <laughs> little. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, and um, yeah, I worked on like a bunch of shows uh, starting at Nickelodeon back in the day. And, you know, the bigger name shows I've worked on are like Ninja Turtles. 
uh, The Fairly Odd Parents, uh, Buddy Thunderstruck, which is a show on Netflix that I encourage you all to check out. It's a stop motion animation show by the guys who make Robot Chicken. So it's really wacky and it is family friendly. It's a little edgy, but you can watch it with your kids or, you know, whatever. But uh, so, yeah, a bunch of different cartoons uh, working on some stuff now. Big secret show for Apple TV Plus. And, um, yeah, and, um, yeah, just a bunch of stuff, yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. Um, so how did you make the transition from, I mean, I know you've been a staff writer as well as a freelance writer. First, do you yeah. want to um, tell our, our, our viewers kind of the difference between writing on staff and doing freelance? Oh, yeah, I mean, this, it's funny because, like, pretty much everything, there, there's so much in animation now these days that is freelance. There used to be this trend where us writers, they'd hire a lot of staff writers in the show. So you'd go into Nickelodeon or Disney and there'd be like, I don't know, five or six writers staffed on a show and you'd all be getting episodes to write. And now, you know, they realize they can kind of just farm it out to a freelance writer. So as a freelance writer, which is kind of what I, it's kind of what I do now. I'm just working from home and, uh, you know, just a lot of emails, a lot of Zoom calls. Uh, and it's it's really you know just kind of you know I I miss being in the studio <laughs> but because of the pandemic we can't do that yeah um, what was the question something about ducks I don't remember I wasn't paying attention I <laughs> hats I remember hats the freelance versus uh, yeah staff writer is so is it more or less determined by like where you work if you're working from home or you're working in the studio yeah or I mean episodes per season yeah it's um. Well, freelance, yeah, really just means you're working from home and you can take on a bunch of different shows at once. Like, I still do freelance for other work. I am technically staffed on the show I'm the head writer on now, story editor. So I am the, I am technically staffed, but they have offices in France. This one show I'm working on, it's a co-production with uh, the BBC and a French company and an American company. So there's no, like, distinct set of offices to go into. So uh -huh. I'm, yeah, so I'm technically freelancing on that, but I am staffed in a way i guess you could say yeah. it's a strange combination but uh yeah yeah so um you know what it is, works i guess i'll have to ask this question in two parts but yeah. what is your average day like as a writer this is a good question there's a lot of goofing off involved because i need like that mental uh I, you know i need to like really be happy in my personal life so i can do good work so um you know i wake up you know, usually 7.30. I'm pretty good at getting up at 7.30 every day, even on weekends. And, uh, you know, coffee, relax, take a walk for an hour, come back, work out, lunch. And then maybe I'll start work at like 1 o'clock and get like a good three hours of work in. Because uh -huh. um, that's like my most productive time of the day is like after I eat, after I work out, after I've kind of just like, you know, got to relax. Yeah. And then... Um, after that, it's, you know, it used to be the bars, but now I'm just ha hanging at home. <laughs> but yeah, it's really just like, once I can find a few hours in the day that I'm inspired to write, then I'll work. But you know, everybody's different. I know some friends who like write all day long. And I'm like, how do you guys write at nighttime? I'm like, I'd rather just like chill some more like, you know, uh, yeah. or early in the morning, I don't get it. So it's just different for everybody. But you know, my day just consists of you know, I will occasionally have Zoom calls and check in a bunch of emails uh, asking me where the scripts are, where the outlines are and all that. And, um, where? you know, <laughs> so it's a lot of that. And um, yeah, that's it's the day is just basically just me trying to figure out the funny jokes that, I'm, that I can put in the script. So even when I'm taking my walks in the morning, I'll often think about, you know, how to write that story. It's, it's a lot of that kind of stuff. But uh, it's different so for everybody. Um, when you're so this the show that you're story editing right now, are you guys doing writers' rooms on Zoom, and how often do you do those? Yeah, we do that. You know, probably like once every two months, and um, it's 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 weird. It's definitely weird. It was a lot better when you know I was at Nickelodeon, and you know you're in the room and you have everybody just like throwing stuff out back and forth, you know, yeah. talking over each other, goofing off, laughing. Now it's just more, you know, professional, which I don't like because everybody has to be given their chance to talk and it just becomes less fun, but we still get it done. Um, it's really just, you know, on the Zoom call, we'll have however many people, like, uh, I think I have 
we have a bunch of freelance writers in the show. I think like up to 10 writers for our show. And, you know, the Zooming aspect is definitely. Um, is it adults? Is it a kid show or adult show? Oh, yeah, this is a, it's a kid show. So generally the stuff that I'm writing is in the age range of 6 to 11. So any typical Disney Nickelodeon shows, six to eleven, yeah. Fun. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. And um you've you know, you've written for some pretty classic shows. Uh Scooby Doo. Oh, um, yeah. I, let me think. I, as I was doing my research last night, the Scooby Doo Guess Who series. Uh -huh. um, my son and I are obsessed with Scooby-Doo, and um, we just finished Mystery Inc., which is super scary, and I probably should not have let my friend <laughs> but I really loved it, so I was like, yeah. on board, I was like, okay, you can watch this. Right. Um, but now we <laughs> do, and he actually loves it. We oh, watched good. Um, your episode that you, you've written a couple, but um, the one that we watched started with Urkel as an Urkel box. And um, it was just such a cool mashup. But I mean, Scooby-Doo for me was something that I watched all the time growing up. So then to see the reboots and have yeah. millennial jokes thrown in there and Steve Urkel um, was very fun. Uh, you know, as a parent, you want to be, you know, hopefully want to be watching a lot of stuff with them. Of course, sometimes you just put it on so you can cook dinner or whatever, but um, yeah. the show and, and it was really fun to watch, you know? Yeah, thanks. The, the cool thing about Scooby-Doo and writing on that show is that, you know, the show's been around since the 70s. So the kids in the 70s are watching it now as adults and even in the 80s and the reruns. So those adults still love Scooby-Doo. So yeah. they'll tune in with their kids. And then plus with all the guest stars we have on the show, those are things that also the adults like love to see. So, yeah, when we said when we had Urkel on there, you know, I was watching Family Matters as a kid. And then we, I wrote the one with Mark Hamill, and I was like, okay. And they know, you know, the adults love to tune in to see the, the heroes, or I would say Urkel is a hero from your childhood, Mark <laughs> Hamill, yes. But uh, yeah, that's, that's one of the more fun shows I've gotten to write on, actually, because it was just like so goofy and uh, yeah, would really cool. Would uh, production give you the guest star, or would you get to pitch? Were you like, I got it, I got a pitch, Urkel, like, I got it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, that's, that's something I never would have thought to do is pitch Urkel. Uh, I think what happened was technically, you know, Warner, uh, Warner Brothers is owns Scooby-Doo. So yeah. when they decided they were going to make the show and that they wanted to include all these celebrities, they're like, okay, who does Warner Brothers have a good relationship with? Or who is Warner Brothers already making a show for? Uh, and I mean, I don't know how they got Urkel. I guess that must have been a show back in the day that's, that was part of the Warner Brothers, you know, library of you know family matters so it was this it was them that came to us with a list of celebrities to contact that they could get for the show oh. um yeah and it's funny because i i got to write one for dolly parton and then i forget what happened i was really excited to write for dolly parton um, and uh I was, i'm a big fan of nine to five her movie uh and so then for whatever reason she couldn't end up doing it so they had to change the guest star i don't know who they changed it to i, I was that was, was after i was gone but uh oh. It's kind of a dream to like write for all these celebrities. So that's part of the bonus. Such a kick out of it. I think Sia was in one episode. Yeah. Um, yeah. It must just be a fun to, to get to be a day player on that show. Um, yeah, yeah. Hold on. You wrote for um, Looney Tunes. Oh, yeah, that's right. I did. The, um, the, new, the new one that just came out, oh, maybe actually more than a few years ago. Yeah, it was called Wabbit at the time. They rebranded uh, you know, Bugs Bunny as a Wabbit. The W. And then, uh, yeah, Change It to Looney Tunes. That was also really fun. That, that was, um, yeah, another iconic character I got to write for. It's always cool when you can write for something that you watched as a kid, like the Ninja Turtles or Scooby-Doo or Iron Man, whatever. Um, yeah. Is that challenging, though? Do you find that there's more hoops to jump through because you have to stay true to the characters that already exist? You know, it, it's probably different with every show like if we're rebooting something but for the most part the stuff that i've written on that's kind of like uh you know established characters it's usually pretty easy because you know i grew up with those characters so writing for ninja turtles was easy you know writing for bugs bunny was easy uh it's just i think it's just because i don't know i've, I've watched so many cartoons you just feel like you know them and um i don't think anything has really changed where we get a new cartoon and they're like hey can you not do what we did in the original. It's usually just kind of like do the same thing because that's what works and people love it. Yeah. 
right? <laughs> Although it would be it would be ironic if like you had seen an episode thirty years ago that you then didn't realize and plagiarized. <laughs> <laughs> So, because it was just like, I have this great idea. And they're like, no, uh, we did that in 82. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny. I do find myself accidentally uh, plagiarizing Simpsons jokes, I think, a lot. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I'll, like, write a script and then, you know, put a joke in there that I think is great. And I'm like, oh, yeah, great joke. And then I'll see the Simpsons rerun and I'll be like, oh, I stole that joke. <laughs> I didn't realize it. <laughs> Right. Yeah. I mean, it's the same when you're writing music. It's like, oh, yeah. you got to check a riff and ask a few people like, this song has been stuck in my head. Did I like this, you know, a song and you're like, I make sure that I didn't take it. From <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet that must be frustrating when you find well, out that maybe it's thing about the collective unconsciousness, you know, that this idea um, that all these ideas have already been created and there's the myth of story and the art, these archetypes are there for a reason because they resonate and they ring true with all of us. Yeah. So when we're pulling ideas out of the collective consciousness, clearly, you know, we're not the only ones. I had an amazing, uh, well, what I thought was an amazing idea for uh, an animated character called Love Monster. Love Monster! Who like loves you so hard and she like breaks <laughs> all your bones. <laughs> And then uh, was just like this character that I cosplayed, um, Sunshine, if he's still on there, he would know Love Monster. Um, but then I realized someone had to get a book series for Love Monster in England. And so, you know, I mean, it's not the most off the wall idea, love and monsters. I mean, those are two common archetypes, but it was funny to see a very similar yeah. idea up there, so. That happens like a lot too. Like when I think of like ideas for new shows or screenplays yeah. or whatever, and then I find out someone else has already done it. It's it's just you know yeah, billions of people in the world and tons of creative people. You're bound to have the same ideas, so it's kind of a bummer, but it happens. Yeah, yeah. You just have to go pick the next one out. Yeah. Um, oh, so well, in terms of, I mean, I know we're all pretty much in isolation right now. Um, but what are some things that you do to fill your creative cup? Yeah, you know, good question. I, I do th to fill my creative cup, uh, you know, I have so much creativity and lots so many ideas. I'm sorry. Drugs, lots of drugs. Drugs. Well, yeah. Alcohol. Sure. <laughs> um, but you know, I like to be around people a lot and I like, I'm not like a super social guy. Mm -hmm. But um, I used to go to, you know, out every night and I'd go to the bars, even if it was alone, just like soak in the energy. Mm -hmm. And that really helped. I could just sit there and think alone, you know, with a drink and just like jot down ideas, just like taking in that. That's usually what gets me, you know, a lot of ideas sitting alone in a, in a place where um, there's a lot of noise. So this quarantine has really stifled that a lot because you can't really go anywhere or be around people. Um, but yeah, I, you know, creativity, what, it's, uh, I always have a ton of ideas. It's trying to find the inspiration to actually sit and write it down. You know, it's like, I get jaded sometimes. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, who's going to buy this show? Or like, you know, uh, what are the chances? But uh, if I really get inspired for whatever reason, then I don't, never know when that's going to strike. Then I'll sit and write for hours and hours. You know? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, so the inspiration really comes with like, did you ever read um, The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield? Uh, so you're the second person to t t talk to me about that in like the past week. And I haven't actually. Fine. Um, it's a great book on creativity and, you know, this belief that we are going to war um, to bring our art out there because procrastination and putting things off. And everything else will get in the way before doing the most important thing, which is for you writing. Yeah. Um, for me. First, <laughs> <laughs> my thing at the moment. But um, for those uh, of you guys that are just tuning in, um, this is Inside Allison's. Oh, thanks, Joe. Thanks for tuning in. Um, Inside Allison's Wonderland. It's a show where we go through the looking glass and down Ooh. the rabbit hole. I feel like into the groovy world of animation should be the end of that tagline. But it's basically um, inside the actor studio, but specifically in animation and video games. So if you like it, feel free to share, feel free to subscribe. I think you can do this little, like, um, there's an airplane at the bottom of your screen. You can send it to anybody that you think 
would think it was cool. I don't know what this other button does. Maybe I should not push it. Oh, um, great. We have some questions. Nice. Hey, cool. You've got a fan. Um, uh, we're going to switch gears to primary in just one second. I just had a couple more. Um, no, actually, people want to know. We all want to know. <laughs> Timer. 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 I have my so um, this you co-authored with Jen Moreau. Um, mm. You want to tell us a little, little bit about the um, kernel of this idea? Yeah, sure. So uh, for those of you that don't know, maybe if you're tuning in, you do know, uh, Primer, the character, is a 13-year-old girl who has um, 33 different body paints. And each body paint has a different superpower. So she puts on three different paints at a time. That's as much as she can put on. And then she goes and fights crime. So she has 33 paints and powers with, I think if you can put on three at a time, you have, yep, yeah, you have, uh, I think she has over 5,000 combinations of powers she can use. So this is a character that uh, Jennifer, my writing partner and I like conceived about two years ago. Um, I think like just about two years ago. And it was something that DC really resonated. Like they loved it when we pitched them the idea. And uh, so from there, we got to write this 134 page graphic novel that's out now and is number one on Amazon. So we were really happy. Uh, check it out if you like superheroes. It's good for, um, you know, adults are loving it too, even though she's a 13 year old girl. We kind of wrote it that way because if you know your comics, you know the Teen Titans. And she's a teenager. We wanted to join the Teen Titans kind of a thing. Um, but yeah, just a fun, goofy character, really good story that's positive. Uh, you know, it, it's very, I think, empowering for kids, uh, you know, girls and boys, everyone in general, I think, uh, about this girl who kind of had like a, you know, a, a tough, a tough time with her family, but finds, you know, inspiration to become a hero. So that's the rough. Uh -huh. Thank you, Immortal mm -hmm. Library, says that they loved it. And um, his or her daughter is um, artsy, so it's something they can look up to. Yeah. Okay. Um, my son and I loved it too. Um, my son is four and a half now and um, we both loved it. I mean, we blew through it in like three nights or something. And I mean, I obviously, we, but um, yeah, Ashley, this character, uh -huh. um, she's just, she feels really authentic. Um, I do like that she has this dark past and this, you know, relationship with her dad that I think feels very relatable for any 13 year old girl, yeah. let alone somebody who, you know, is going dealing with everything that she's been dealing with, but she has so much hope and um, just a great sense of spirit. So, um, so did she, was this your first incarnation of Ashley or was she a TV idea? Uh, no. Yeah. This was the first, uh, the first, we, it was strictly going to be a comic book. I think we were sitting around talking one day and uh, Jennifer and I had been working on animation for so long. Actually, no way. You know what? I think you caught me. I think you're right. I think originally, that's a good point. We did want this to be an animated show. And then uh, we started typing up like a one page or one sheet of it. And then DC came to us and was like, cause through Jennifer, she had these con connections at DC. And they just happen to be looking for new characters. And so we're like, oh, maybe we take this animated series idea and turn it into obviously a comic book. It only makes sense she's a superhero. Uh, so no, that's a, that was, yeah, good point. I forgot we kind of started, uh, she started her life as an animated show. Um, is there more coming? <laughs> well, we'll see. <laughs> I mean, we, there's, there's some news that we'll be putting out hopefully soon. Uh, and, um, but you know, things, Things are working. It's what's that? Nothing. Just okay. Spoil anything. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I'll tell you this though, because I tell this to everybody. We do have. Um, we get asked a lot about the sequels. Uh, yeah. You know, the future books, and we have ideas for the next four books. So we have this giant storyline uh, that encompasses her and her family and her new family with new villains and crazy cool new ideas. So hopefully we'll be able to tell all of them. Um, just a matter of time, I guess, yeah. So, and there's other things in play. Um, people don't lie. Um, yeah. <laughs> how did you get connected with Gretel? Is it Gretel Lusky, the artist? 
um, her her artwork is gorgeous. Um, yeah. And her style, I feel it has it, you know, adheres to the comic book style, but it's so feminine, and that's one of the things I really loved about it. And my son too, like his favorite color is rainbow. So, <laughs> I mean, so, <laughs> so yeah. How did you connect with the artist Gretel? So DC Comics uh, brought a few different artists to us. I think they brought like three different artists, okay. and. And we were, and we were, you know, asked to choose from them, really. And Gretel's really, really wanted to do the book. And once we kind of saw her stuff, we're like, "Yeah, this seems to make the most sense." And because, yeah, Primer is a colorful character, and I think lots of kids, like when I was a kid, I loved seeing lots of colors. Yeah. And and Gretel tends to do a lot of amazing, colorful work. She has this amazing Instagram feed where you can see her art. Um, and it was just like the natural fit. Great, great. What's her um, handle that you can be sharing with us? That's a good question. Uh, we'll share I'll it. have to look it up. Yeah, I'll share it afterwards. I, you know, I, I'll see if I can find it. But uh, yeah, Gretel Lusky, she should be very easy to find if you search. Yeah. Yeah. Gretel and Lusky are not super common. Yeah. <laughs> Where is she based out of? What's that? Where is she from? Okay, so the story takes place in Washington, D.C., so, and the reason we did that is because uh, I think originally we had pitched, oh yeah, let's have this take place in Gotham because with Gotham being so dark, we thought it might be kind of a cool contrast to have this bright, colorful superhero show up, uh, you know, in Batman's. Gretel's, right. thank you, Immortal Library, just shared Gretel's Instagram. Thank you. You guys can all go fo follow Gretel and, and see more of her artwork. Yeah. Sorry, you were saying? I was just saying, so, uh, yeah, originally we pitched Gotham, and then we pitched, I think, another you know, Metropolis or some other DC towns. And then uh, DC Comics was like, how about we have this take place in Washington, DC, because that's where the Justice League is. Uh, I, I think that's what they said. That's where the Justice League is. I actually forget that move around. So we're like, yeah, okay, we'll put Primer where the Justice League is, so in case you need to, you know, help them out. Yeah. Um... And so what was the most fun of writing this? I think, you know, just the whole process was so incredibly fun. But I guess the coolest part of it was seeing the artwork come in. Yeah. And, yeah, and going back and forth with Gretel on designs and having her give us, you know, the concepts, her rough sketches, and then just going back and forth to kind of figure out, you know, what it should all really look like. Um, writing it was a blast, too. It was just you know, we got to kind of go nuts and just kind of really, we, we, we had a lot of freedom to kind of tell the story we wanted to. Like DC would, you know, guide us, but they never like gave us these steadfast demands or rules. You know, they were really good at like letting us tell what we wanted to. So we wrote this, we wrote this like a movie. If you ever, you know, if you know anything about screenplay structure or how, or how movies are, we kind of pretty much follow all those kinds of beats. And so it was kind of fun to like put a, a movie in, in a graphic novel. Um, do you want to just be, real quick say, so like you have your midpoint and. <laughs> yeah, sure. sure. If I can remember as I have to read my own book maybe, primer. Maybe you just have to read the, the whole novel. Um, for anybody that's just tuning in. Hey, Joe. And um, anybody else? Um, this is Inside Allison's Wonderland. And right now, I wonder, am I below you or are you above? You're above me. I think that's for the eyesight on the camera. So you're below me, actually. So I guess. Oh. It, same for you and me. I was thinking yeah, yeah, you're up there. it would be better if you were higher. I could make better eye contact with you. But um, <laughs> Joe, you know Primer? Tom is the co-author of Primer. Um, I love this graphic novel. I read it in like three days with my son, and he's only four and a half. So um, there's also, you know, um, violence in comic books and television is real and for a long time we didn't want my son to see any kind of guns or yeah. you know we don't want him to play with guns just because i feel like they're not a toy and he's a boy and he's drawn to them and there is not i mean of course there's action but i don't feel like there's a ton of violence so yes i give this two thumbs up for kids you know you thank you first off that you make a good point actually what you just said is exactly what DC kind of did ask us for the there's a scene in there where she ends up fighting a street gang and they're dressed as knights they're dressed as medieval knights originally we had this scene where it's 
two street gangs in cars driving down the street, shooting guns at each other. And DC was like, hey, you know what? This is, you know, we want this to, families to be able to read this. Can we just remove the guns? And we're like, okay. So we came up with like a silly street gang because of that. And because of that, people love this silly street gang. And I, I'm so proud that we created this gang. But because of the gun note, yeah, we wanted it to be, you know, everybody. Um, it's stuff that I wouldn't have thought to do, but DC knew what they were doing. Totally. And, you know, when we grew up, I mean, th there was guns and everything and it was, oh, yeah. but the world has just shifted in so many ways with, um, I just, it's something that we're all dealing with a lot younger and being more um, conscious of as parents and, um, but kids love action and my kid will still pick up a stick. <laughs> Where do you get from? It's not. I think there's there's like an innate pull of um, of that kind of thing, but it's it's finding that balance where uh, you know for our family we also don't want to villainize something so much that it then becomes more appealing because it's taboo. Yeah. So we try to talk about things and and look for exciting content that that strikes that itch for action without being violent yeah like in in this book primer is proton it, bags yeah <laughs> oh my god that's my buddy greg yeah hey, greg uh, i haven't talked to he's my he's, he's my old buddy from college nice. i actually wouldn't i wouldn't be in la if it hadn't been for this guy greg that just spoke up um oh thanks joe thanks joe you um know? no he just said oh. he was leaving so it was being nice <laughs> i'm like okay. what the world so greg went to emerson no, his brother did. And oh, he, and, yeah, so Greg got me to transfer to, I was at UMass Amherst, mm -hmm. uh, and then Greg introduced me to his brother, who was at Emerson. I was like, oh, that's a film school. I can go to learn to write you know, movies instead of take my science classes. Where did so you that grow? got, what's it? Where did you grow up? So I grew up just outside Boston in a town called Winchester, Massachusetts. Winchester. So I commuted, yeah, Winchester. So I commuted to school, like taking the train every day, because that school was very expensive. Uh, no. Yeah, definitely, Greg. We'll catch up. I'll hit you up, buddy. Yeah, sorry. Now I'm talking to all your people. Is it available? Uh, Esther, I believe it is available. Tim Malcolm. Yeah, uh, it was at Tim. I, this, is the, this is the guy I'm thinking it is. Tim, yeah. it, it was at Bookends, and uh, they sold out. So go tell uh, Mrs. Go, go tell the people at Bookends to order some more, because I know they're out. But thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Winchester. Winchester. Go say chums. Yeah. <laughs> Just tuning in right now. This is Inside Allison's Wonderland. It's an interview show where we sit down with some of the top talent working in video games. Like this guy, Tom. <laughs> uh, this is our first, very first episode back because the show was a web series and then it was a podcast and then I got lazy and now there's a global pandemic. So there's no Comic Cons or ability to interact. And I thought this would be a good time to reboot the show. So thank you so much, Tom, for being my first guest. A lot of people asking where they can get signed copies. Do you have that available on your website? Oh, I got to start that website. First off, that's my friend, Neil this guy down there yeah. and uh he's gonna get 100 signed copies because i need to up my numbers on amazon so i'll buy 100 copies and i'm just gonna ship them to him <laughs> did you uh, guys <laughs> you for a free copy you pay um but that's so interesting so from start to finish when, like what year did you guys start working on primer okay so we started it uh about just two years ago we we originally came wow. up with the yeah yeah. Yeah. We covered the idea early 2018 and then um, DC bought it from us in uh, I guess the summer of 2018. So we went right to work and it was finished. I think we finished writing last summer, but the artwork takes so long because Gretel is doing, um, you know, she's doing all the heavy lifting, the artist. So it takes a long time for the artwork. So two years ago from start from, from, you know, conception to it hitting the shelves, mm -hmm. two years. So yeah. That's actually not bad. I mean, novels, uh, regular novels take so much longer. So two years actually feels to me speedy. Would it feel like speedy to you? Or did well, it well, you know, you and I both work in animation, right? So I generally see animations from start to finish too when the, they start the show. Yeah, it'll take longer if you're working on an animated show that you're pitching. Like that can, development can take forever. So in terms of this, yeah, it actually was... It, 
it was pretty much was a smooth, quick process for what I expected. That's great. Yeah. Um, I said we were going to go about 30 to 40 minutes and we're at 35 right now. So I want to just reach it out to anybody that's been listening to see if they might have any questions for anybody that's just tuning in. This is Tom Kravsky. He's an animation writer, story editor, and co-author of the new DC comics graphic novel primer. Primer. Um, which you can get one on Amazon in which category in books, in all books, <laughs> all books. Yeah. Graphic deep in um food so um, <laughs> don't eat it what's number one in graphic novels or kids or oh yeah this one is specifically i'm sorry sometimes the, the audio on these things is so weird you cut out when i talk and i cut out when you talk or something so i, I miss some of the things you're saying i'm sorry um it's in the dc comics graphic novels section yeah i mean you just type in primer graphic novel and amazon it'll show up yeah well, cool. And how is the process of working with your co-writer, Jen? Super easy. This is actually the first thing we ever written together. And you know, we've been together for a long time. <laughs> it's, it was surprisingly easy. I would usually do like the first pass of the script and give it to Jen because, uh, you know, what do I know about being a 13 year old girl? You know, I haven't been one in a long time. But uh, no, so Jen, so Jen would kind of like fix that dialogue and, you know, in the story wise, she was really good at making it sound like it wasn't coming from a 43 year old man. Uh, so but it was really easy because she was, she, you know, she and I were just like so excited to be doing this. No trouble. Yeah. Um, we do have another question coming in from Sir Stony Island. How do you go about weaving in social or heavier issues in the work in YA? YA for young adult. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, we, when that's if <laughs> we had to do it very carefully because obviously it, it seems like sounds like you've read the book because you know there is some a little bit of a heavier storyline in there with her backstory and we just kind of balanced it with the humor and the heart because although the character kind of had a um, rough past you know we want to show her being you know fighting against that and just kind of like being her own goofy self so we had to, you know, be careful with how many scenes we'd put in with her, her real father. I think it's probably different for every book, but it's pretty light in this book compared to other ones I've read. So, yeah. yeah. Um, and now's the time where there's so many issues on the table with um, everything that's going on politically and Black Lives Matter, and I'm sure we're going to be seeing a lot of new voices coming out in comics yeah. in the next few years. So that's very exciting. Um, primer turning into an animated series? Hmm? Well, I, I will tell you this. So one reason DC Comics did want this is because they know that Jennifer and I come from the animation background. Yeah. So, they, so in case, if it were to go to animated series, then Jennifer and I would be the ones in charge of that, which is one reason they brought us on. We know all about animation. We know how we could turn this into uh, an animated show or live action show. So we'll see. I can't, you know, say anything yet or whatever, you know, but thank well, you for the question. We're all rooting for you. I mean, thank you. it would be an amazing show. Yeah. Um, the characters are great. Um, any more questions before we say goodbye to Tom Krasky? Uh So the show is going to be happening every Wednesday now at 6 p.m. Wonderland Wednesday. Wonderland Wednesday. Sir. Sure. Um, so you can tune in next week. Um, well, we might have a special guest, so I don't want to <laughs> blow any surprises, but um, a future guests we have coming up are Evan Spiridellis, co-creator of Storybots. Um, we're going to have Melissa Hutchinson, the voice actress. Um, yeah. Oh, you're so welcome, Barry. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks, Barry. Uh, Barry? You know Barry? No, no, I just said that. I don't. I just said thanks. Thanks, Barry. Um, nice. And there's definitely, I'm, I'm open to hearing your suggestions of who you would like to see on the show. Um, so you can always drop me a DM. Um, Mike Collinsworth is probably going to be drop, dropping on the show in the next couple weeks. And um, we got a lot, we have a lot of animation and games to talk about. So thank you so much to everybody that tuned in and hopefully we'll see you next week. Thanks so much, Tom. Thanks for having me guys. Thanks for tuning in. Talk soon. Bye. Bye.